What is going on my Guardian Gamers is I, Birdman, back with another Titan build. I know, I said in the last video that I wasn't gonna do another Titan thing, but my YouTube algorithm says that Titan, you know, is like the one thing that everyone likes to watch from me, so I guess we'll just do more Titan. Regardless, I'm back with another little setup that's a little bit different using a really cool exotic that we got back in Lightfall for all the fun strand stuff. It's definitely not the synthos up, just slash and dash. It's, uh, I think, a lot better for overall end game. But before we get into the build, know that you can follow me over on YouTube and Twitter at Birdman778. Make sure you're liking the video, commenting something that you're interested in seeing down below, subscribing to the channel, and becoming a member. Other than that, well, let's swing right on into this. Now, we like to always look at what exotic we're gonna be using for our armor, kind of the coup de gras one for this setup, and that's gonna be the ambient leap. It reads, Puppeteer's Control. Dranger's Lash spawns two additional projectiles, tracks targets more aggressively, and travels farther. Gain woven mail when suspending targets. Now, this is really great all around because one, uh, it's going to make sure all your enemies are constantly suspending in the air. This is going to be great for that end game content that I'm kind of focusing on right now because uh, that Dranger's Lash with these are pretty dang strong for constantly suspending, you know, uh, different champions and stuff like that. So it is definitely, definitely useful. And then also, you know, you gain woven mail when you suspend a target. You, it doesn't even matter if it's the Dranger's Lash. You use a, a shackle grenade and be able to do it as well. So. Uh, this exotic is pretty dang freaking awesome, and I still just don't understand why people are, you know, just doing melee stuff with Strand. I think this is definitely probably a better option all around. So we always like to look at our subclass whenever we do this, and obviously this is going to be the Berserker Titan. Definitely lean on your Blade Fury. Use it as much as you humanly want. With this setup, you should be able to get your super back pretty dang fast uh, if you're doing everything correctly, constantly spending people with a grenade, and also just getting plenty of your melee kills so i wouldn't worry too much about it also this build provides a whole lot of orbs of power so you're going to get that back pretty dang fast when it comes to our abilities i recommend rally barricade purely off the fact that you know uh tower and barricade might be really great but it's a minute 10 versus this is a 38 second you're going to be spending targets you don't need to sit behind your barrier all that long i wouldn't really worry about it but if you're really stressed about it, towering barricade would be better probably for that end game content we're going to be using Frenzy Blade, and I want you to use this as much as humanly possible. Figure out the fact it's going to sever targets, and also it's going to flow well in with one of the fragments we're using for this setup. Definitely be using the Shackle Grenade, because one's going to stop those unstoppables, but also for the fact that, again, whenever we suspend targets with our Ambient Leap, we are going to get Woven Mail, so this is a great way to constantly make sure that we are activating that. Aspect wise, definitely want to go with Dranger's Lash. Again, it's the whole point of using the ambient leap. I activate a class ability to create a ripple in reality that travels forward along the ground, suspending and damaging targets. It hits. Obviously, we're going to get three of these. They're going to travel farther and be more aggressive. So use your class ability as much as humanly possible. Banner of War. Obviously, we got this back in season 22, you know, pretty recently, and everyone's been absolutely loving it. Defeat a target with a melee attack, finisher, or sword to raise a Banner of War. It pulses with energy, periodically healing nearby allies, increasing melee and sword damage. Targets defeated by you and nearby allies charge the banner, increasing the speed of the pulses. So get plenty of melee kills. Remember, uh, frenzied attack, do that. Get finishers, do all the fun stuff. Hit your banner war constantly flowing in the air. When it comes to our fragments, we're going to be using Threat of Generation. This is an absolute must. Healing uh, damage generates grenade energy. It's going to be constantly, you know, just any any damage. doesn't matter what the damage is. You're going to get grenade energy uh, and, you know, get plenty of those shackles to then turn into woven mail for yourself. Thread of Propagation, Powered Melee Final Blows, grant your strand weapons unraveling rounds. The main weapon we're using for the setup is a strand weapon, so we want those unraveling rounds. What does that do exactly for us? Well, uh, the target is permeated with destructive strand matter. As they take additional damage, they create unraveled projectiles that seek out nearby targets. So obviously those are going to hurt enemies. Unravel targets unwind to a tangle when defeated, which is great. But also for the fact it's going to add that barrier champion stun for us in this setup. So make sure that, you know, if you're going against a barrier, get a quick small add kill with your melee real fast. Get that unraveling rounds and then, you know, enjoy stunning a barrier. Thread of Mind, defeating suspended targets, grants class ability energy, essentially ensuring that we're going to be getting that barricade up as much as we humanly want to constantly spend targets, constantly get woven mail, and just essentially make this build unstoppable. Thread of Fury is the final one. I think this one's kind of up to you. Uh, in my personal opinion, I think the first three are the absolute must, but this one ain't too bad. Damage targets with Tangles grants melee energy, essentially ensuring that we're getting that melee back as much as we humanly want. 
you're gonna be creating a lot of tangles with this setup so go at it have fun now i mentioned we're using a strand weapon for this setup and the most obvious easy one is going to be the quicksilver storm it only becomes a strand weapon whenever you get the catalyst so you will have to fill that up but once you do you have a really great exotic strand weapon it's intrinsic trait rocket tracers landing multiple hits turns your next shot into a homing micro rocket and then that leads into the grenade chaser landing multiple rockets loads a grenade and then when you press your reload button to switch to a grenade launcher mode and it's really great because that grenade launcher can create tangles uh, whenever it blows up enemies it's just also really fun to use against uh you know crowds of enemies for your other two weapons that's completely up to you but you know i just always like to have like a fusion rifle on i think fusions are always going to be probably the best secondary to most weapons uh in destiny 2 you let me know what you think down below uh, but yeah, I've always been a big fusion rifle fan. And then I also put on this new uh, Season of the Witch rocket launcher because it's strand and it's got field prep and explosive light. And it's just kind of hot and sexy. You know, the Regnant's typically my go-to just because of the auto-loading explosive light. When it comes to the armor mods and everything you're going to be using for this setup, for your helmet, obviously we want to be using strand siphon to get those orbs of power whenever we get kills with our, you know, uh, Quicksilver Storm. And then I always chuck on the ashes to assets and a hands-on so that I'm getting plenty of coverage between my grenade and my melee to get super energy. On our arms, I always like to, again, kind of how we do with hands-on ashes to assets, always like to do impact induction and momentum transfer so that I'm constantly having that ebb and flow with those two so that my grenade helps out my melee, my melee helps out my grenade. And then finally, Boltering Destination uh, grants class ability energy when you cause damage with a grenade. This one's kind of up in the air and up to you. Uh, I, I would say like the one thing you could swap it out for would be maybe like grenade kickstart. But to be completely and utterly honest with you, it doesn't really matter. You're getting everything done that you really need. You're getting your grenade back plenty. You're getting everything done. I, I, I really, yeah, this is more just kind of a luxury perk. Chest piece, definitely recommend at least two concussive dampeners. Uh, I put on a little bit extra, you know, recovery for this. Just, I don't know, just cause I did. Don't, don't bug me, don't, don't judge me. But you could get another, you know, one of those uh, concussive dampeners out there as well. On our legs, I always like to do double absolution to get that uh, ability cooldown whenever we get an orb power. And then a recoup just to get a little bit of health. I don't think this is really all that necessary as well. Another one of those just like kind of up to you if you want. Um, you don't really need to worry about it. Like again, I could do that. And then look, oh yeah, you have more recovery. So that's that's mainly what I would say to do. And then finally on our Titan Mark, always like to do double distribution and then a powerful traction so that I'm getting class ability energy and also pulling in those orbs of power whenever I activate my class ability. Now, if you've been around my channel uh, this season, especially, you know that I've kind of constantly been like, hey, don't really worry about the artifact. Nothing here really helps you out. Well, I'm kind of changing my mind on this one. I decided to kind of lean into it just a little bit. And that's going to be, let's start with the middle row. Tantronic Tangle Strand Weapon Final Blows have a chance to generate Tangle. Obviously, we like to do that. Communal Pickups in the fourth category when an ally destroys or pick up a Tangle or Orb Power or Elemental Orb. The Tangle cooldown is reduced by five seconds and you gain bonus damage with weapons matching your subclass for 10 seconds. We really like that. And then the Refreshing Pickups picking up a tangle grants energy to your least powered ability obviously that's going to help us out with our melee and also our grenade mainly and then in the final row i did monochromatic maestro to get that extra damage and then also rapid fire ranger so that i weaken targets on precision hits again typically i'm not really going to be focusing into this at all but i just kind of felt like it for this one like why not well let's, let's finally do like an artifact one where the artifact actually kind of helps us out now typically in this section i usually tell you what weapons you could swap in and out to help yourself out honestly any strand weapon if you don't have the quicksilver storm it's not a make or break um you know something like this old sterling from season the deep could be really helpful and then obviously again any strand weapon in your heavy slot uh is definitely usable but again i just think this is the best option all around thank you so much for stopping by this video hope you guys really enjoyed again let me know something you're interested in seeing down below do you want to see some more hunter and warlock content or are we just going to be sticking with titan again i need to know because you know it uh it just helps me out knowing things but again know you follow me over on youtube and twitter at birdman778 give a like on the video comment down below subscribe and become a member regardless guys thank you so much for all the support and love recently i hope you have a great night day whatever it may be.